Hey guys, my name is Jordan Hetrick. I'm the best-selling author of books about how to use action cameras. In this beginner's guide for the Insta360 X3, I want to help you guys get your camera set up and get started so you can get out there and start filming with it. Along the way, I want to share some of my favorite tips and tricks for using this camera to capture some amazing 360 footage and also some traditional videos and photos. So let's get started with the Insta360 X3. First thing we need to do is just get your camera unboxed and set up so you can start using it. On the box here, you can see some of the key features of the X3. I'm gonna show you more of these features as we go through this video, but I just wanna show you some of the features that are listed on the box here. You've got 5.7K at 30 frames per second, 360 spherical video capture. So this is great for your 360 videos and also for reframing shots. You've got the single lens mode, which is for recording just out of one of the lenses. You can choose which lens you wanna record out of. You've also got the 72 megapixel 360 degree photo, which is great for capturing very high resolution 360 photos. The X3 also has active HDR video, so that's gonna balance out the light and dark areas in your videos. Of course, you've got the invisible selfie stick, which I'll show you how to use. Flow state stabilization is gonna create stabilization so your videos look smooth. You've also got 360 degree horizon lock, so as you rotate your camera, the horizon will stay level. The camera's waterproof to 10 meters, 33 feet, You've also got voice control and AI powered editing, which is available through the Insta360 app, which is a really great app. And I'll show you that too. Now let's open up the box and I'll show you what comes inside. Inside the box here, this is the X3 camera, of course, and it's got some protective packaging on the lenses and the touch screen to keep it nice and protected. And we'll get that set up in just a second. Next, you can just pull out this little box and inside of there, there's some other accessories you can use with your X3. So the X3 doesn't come with very many accessories, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to add some more accessories to your kit so you can capture those invisible selfie stick shots and just get the most out of your camera. This is a neoprene carrying case you can use to protect your X3 when you're not using it. It's very important to keep those camera lenses protected since they are exposed and any scratches will show up in your shots. So it's really important that you don't set your camera down on those lenses. We've also got this little lens cleaning cloth here, which is just a standard lens cleaning cloth got some paperwork such as the quick start guide but I'm gonna take you through all these steps. In this little box here you have the USB-C cable which is used for charging your camera and also for transferring files. Now let's get your camera charged. You can set your camera on top of the little neoprene carrying case just to keep it protected. You'll also need to get a micro SD card to store your camera's photos and videos. The X3 doesn't come with a micro SD card so you're gonna need to get one separately and this is used to store all of your camera's files. The Insta360 X3 requires a V30 class card and you wanna make sure you get this exact class of card. I would recommend getting a minimum of 64 gigabytes, but you can go all the way up to one terabyte card and that'll be able to store your files. I'll put a link for some of the cards in the video description below if you don't have a micro SD card yet. This little compartment here that looks like a side door is actually the battery for the X3. So if you slide these two little tabs up so you can see red, you can just pull the battery out and the micro SD card goes in the slot right here inside of that compartment. So take your micro SD card just like this and slide it into that little slot. Push it down so it clicks into place and then you can reinsert the battery and make sure these little tabs are closed so you're not seeing any red. You want to make sure that's closed so that no water can get in the camera because that will keep your camera waterproof. You can buy replacement batteries and it's nice to have a spare battery on hand in case this battery runs out. That way you can just pull the battery out, swap it for a new one and go and start recording again. Insta360 also makes this quick charger which is really nice so you can be charging a battery while you're out recording and then when the battery runs out you can just swap it out easily. The door above the battery is the door with the USB-C port. So you can open that door up and that's how we're gonna charge your camera by using that USB-C cable that came with your camera. So grab that cable and plug the USB-C end into the port here on your camera. Plug the other end of the USB cable into a wall charger, a portable power bank, or a computer. It's gonna take a couple hours for the camera to charge at first. And you just wanna use a charger that's got a five volt, three amp output and that's gonna be the proper outage for your camera. Once the camera starts charging, the light will come on on your camera indicating that the camera is charging. You can press pause on this video while the camera charges. Once you see that light turn off, you can come back to the video and we'll continue on. Also, if you could take a moment to like this video, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm so that other people like you can find this video and get help with it too. And be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on to stay tuned for more videos. Once that light turns off, you can just pull the USB-C cable out of the port and close that side door. Make sure that side door is closed completely without any orange showing on that tab because that's gonna keep your camera waterproof as well. Now that the camera's charged, let's power it on and go through some of the setup items to get your camera set up and ready to go. So just press the power button on the side of the camera here. That's gonna power your camera on so we can go through these setup items. The first thing it's gonna do is ask you for a language. You're gonna scroll up or down to select your language and then press confirm. 
And now it's going to prompt you to connect to the Insta360 app so we can update the camera's firmware. If you don't already have the Insta360 app, go ahead and download it. It's available for free for iOS and Android. And this app can be used to update your camera's firmware. It can also be used to transfer files. And there's some great editing tools in it, so you're probably going to want to use this app. Once you download the Insta360 app, your camera is already in pairing mode. So you just tap this icon here to connect your camera. You can just follow the prompts through to update the camera's firmware. This is going to give you the latest features for the Insta360 X3 and make your camera ready to use. So go ahead and follow those prompts. You can press pause on this video. And once your camera is updated and your camera is turned back on and ready to go, I'm going to give you a little tour around the camera. Now that your camera's firmware is updated, go ahead and remove the packaging that was protecting the lens. And let's take a little tour and I'm going to show you some of the features of the Insta360 X3. This little button on the left side here with the circle is the camera's shutter button. That's what you use to start and stop recording videos or to take photos. The button on the other side here is to switch between lenses. So if you want to switch between the front lens, the back lens, and 360, this will rotate through those three different options. You've got two super wide angle lenses, one on the front and one on the back. You really want to make sure these stay protected and don't get scratched because these are your camera's eyes to create the photos and videos you're going to create. On this side of the camera here, you have a microphone. You also have a speaker when you play your videos back. The power button to power on and off your camera. And you also have this quick button, which will give you some quick options to get into different settings that you can preset. And you can get to those settings real easily by just using that button. And of course, the side doors on the camera, which I already showed you. There are four different microphone openings around the camera for recording spherical sound, as well as stereo options. So if your camera is not powered on, you can just press the power mode button on the side of the camera here, and your camera will power on. It'll take a few seconds to start up. On the touch screen, you have a battery life icon that shows the amount of battery life that's remaining on your camera. You've also got this icon over here that shows your camera's micro SD card storage. So it shows how much time is remaining in the current setting you're using. If the screen goes to sleep while we're doing this little tour, you can press the power button on the side of the camera and that'll wake the screen back up so you can see the options here. At the bottom here, it shows the mode that you're recording in and it also shows the main settings for that mode. If you want to change that mode, you can either tap on the icon and it'll bring up the other modes for the camera. Or you can also just go to the middle of the screen and swipe sideways to scroll the, through those different modes. There are a variety of modes to record either videos or photos using your X3. I'll show you some of these modes in just a second so you understand what they're used for. But first, let me just finish giving you a little tour of the touchscreen. If you tap on where it says 5.7K30, that's the settings for that mode. So if you tap on that, it'll bring up the options. You can change those settings such as resolution and frame rate if you're recording video or resolution and timer if you're recording photos. And you'll notice, for example, in 360 video mode right now, I have it set to 5.7K at 30 frames per second. And that's the largest resolution available in 360 mode on the X3. But you also have a frame rate of only 30 frames per second. If you want to have a faster frame rate, which is used for recording slow motion, then you'd have to lower the resolution down to 4K. But when you go to reframe those videos, it's going to be lower quality because you're pulling just a little piece of that spherical video to reframe it. So you definitely want to record at the highest resolution possible so you can pull out videos from it and they're still high resolution. If you swipe over from the right side of the screen, that's going to bring up more setting options. So you've got an auto tab, you also have manual, and that's going to allow you to change a lot of the key settings for your camera, such as ISO and white balance. I'm going to just keep you guys on auto right now because uh, you can change a lot of these settings and affect them depending on your shots. But to get started, I would just say just start with auto. And I do have a book available that I've written for the X3 that's got all of the settings you'll need for this camera. So that talks about all the settings, plus way more, because there's so much you can do with this camera. So definitely check that out in the link in the video description below. After you've changed your settings, you can just pull, go ahead and pull the screen back over, and then that will disappear and you'll be back in the screen you can use to record your videos. If you tap on this little icon here, that'll just switch lenses. So if you're in 360 mode, it'll just switch the view of the lens you're looking through even though you're recording that full sphere. But if you're recording in single lens mode, then that'll actually switch to the other lens if you want to record out of the front or the back lens. If you pull down from the top of the screen, that's going to bring up the shortcut menu. And these little icons give you more of the general camera settings, such as turning on the beeps or a vibration if you want your camera to vibrate when you start recording. There's also some microphone settings here. So if you want to set a direction lock, so if you're recording 360 video, it'll record full spherical sound. But then when you go to edit it in the Insta360 app and you reframe it, the mic's going to be directed at where the camera is pointing. So that's a pretty nice feature to use. You've also got lots of other options here, but the bottom right corner is the settings 
If you tap on that, it's going to give you more of the general camera settings, as well as that's where you can go and format your micro SD card after you've offloaded your footage. So on the different modes, there's two different options. You've got the 360 recording, which is going to record out of both lenses. You've also got the single lens options. In the 360 options, you have video, which is just going to record a regular video in 360, full spherical video. You've also got active HDR video. So that's going to balance out the bright and the dark areas in your video, which is great for contrasty scenes, especially if you have a lot of bright light. There's a time-lapse mode which can record up to 8K photos and it's going to be able to combine them into the Insta360 app into a time-lapse video. So that's a really cool way to capture some amazing time-lapses. You've got time shift, which is more for moving time-lapses. Bullet time, which I'm sure you've seen some of these videos where you rotate your camera around and it captures you in the center of it in really slow motion. Kind of looks like a matrix style video where it's a really slow motion, almost 3D effect. You also have loop recording, so if you just want to record a certain amount of time and overwrite the video as you record, that's what loop recording is for, such as a dash cam, for example. You've got the star lapse mode. This is for recording those clear starry nights, and any night shots really you can do a night lapse of using this mode, but it's got those star trail effect if you want to use it when you go to edit it in the Insta360 app. You've got burst photos, which will still take nine photos over a quick burst. There's interval mode, which will take a photo every few seconds or every 10 seconds, depending on the settings you choose. You've also got HDR photo, which is gonna be like HDR video, but a photo. And then regular photo mode, which you can use to capture those huge 72 megapixel photos, which is a really high resolution photo that you can pull still frames out of. You can reframe it and get some amazing shots that way. Or you can just use it as a 360 photo and post it so people can look all around the photo. When you switch over to the single lens options, there's a few less options, but there's some really cool ones here too. So you can record a regular video. And if you go into the settings, you'll see that there's an option to record 4K at 30 frames per second, which is a really high resolution video. You can also record at 3.6K at 60 frames per second. So you've got slow motion options there if you record at 3.6K at 60 frames per second. And then you just choose which lens you want to record out of and you can record a regular rectangular video. You also have me mode in the single lens mode, and this actually records using both the lenses even though it's in the single lens options. But you're gonna record like with your camera straight out, and it's gonna make the invisible selfie stick disappear. So you'll get a rectangular video, but without the selfie stick in it. And then you've got loop recording and also a photo mode, just using the single lens. So if you just want a standard flat photo, you can use that for that. I'm just gonna switch back over to the 360 mode now. When you want to start recording a video, just press the shutter button here and your camera will start recording. And while you're recording, if you want, you can tap on this icon here and it's going to show you both the front and the back lens so you can see what's being recorded out of both the lenses, even though it's actually recording a full spherical video. Press the shutter button again when you want to stop recording and your video will be saved to the camera's micro SD card. You can also swipe right from the left side of the screen here and that's going to bring up the media that's on your camera's micro SD card. So you can view your videos and photos here and preview them. You can also delete them with this trash can icon if you want to get rid of some of the files you don't want anymore. And once you're done viewing your media, you can just swipe back over to get back into the recording screen. You can also use the Insta360 app as a remote viewfinder to control your camera and record remotely. This is really useful with a 360 camera like the X3, so you can be out of the shot when you start recording. First, just make sure your camera is powered on so that your Insta360 app can see your camera. And then open up the Insta360 app and tap on the little icon at the bottom of the screen that shows a camera. And that's gonna prompt you to connect to your camera. Since you've already connected the camera before when we did the update, it should connect really easily. Once the camera's connected, it's gonna show you the screen here and it's gonna show you a view through your camera's lens. It shows you all of the different modes available at the bottom of the screen here. So you can scroll sideways to tap through the different modes. Right now it's in 360 mode, which you can see with the icon here on the screen, so it's showing you the 360 modes at the bottom of the screen. If you want to switch over to a single lens mode, you can tap on that 360 icon and that'll switch over to a single lens mode. The only two additional modes you've got here are Reframe Live and Live, so you can live stream using the app. And that's how you do it, by going to these modes on the app. But I'm going to switch over to video mode for now, and when you want to start recording, you can just tap the shutter button here and the camera will start recording video. And you can see a live view of what you're recording as it records. As it records, you can also move around the screen to see a different perspective of what you're recording. But because it's recording a 360 sphere, it's not actually gonna affect what you're recording. 
just gonna give you a preview of what is being recorded. You can also tap this little flag icon and that'll mark a moment in your video if something exciting happens that you want the Insta360 app to see when it's doing its auto editing. You don't need to have an external Wi-Fi signal to connect your camera to the Insta360 app because it's putting out its own Wi-Fi signal and that's what it's using to connect to the app. After you've recorded your video, you can tap on this little icon here and it'll show you the most recently recorded video. It's also gonna take you into the Insta360's editing portion of the app where you can use some amazing tools to really reframe these videos or to create some amazing edits. And I will show you that too. When you're done recording, you wanna turn your camera off. Just hold down the power button on the side of the camera and your camera will power off. When you're recording, you wanna make sure your camera is on a selfie stick like this so you can get that invisible pull effect. So I wanna show you some mounting tips next. Let's go check that out. Next, I wanna show you guys some tips on mounting the Insta360 X3. Since mounting is how you're gonna create some of those amazing effects and get some great shots. The mounting system for the X3 is based on this one quarter inch thread here at the bottom of the camera. You can use that to connect your camera directly to a lot of the mounts, especially Insta360's mounts. For example, if you wanna connect it to this mount, which is the Insta360 invisible selfie stick, it's got the quarter inch stud on the top of the mount here. And you can just screw that directly into the camera for a nice secure mount. The great thing about doing this also is that your camera is gonna be lined up directly with the pole for that invisible selfie stick effect. And that's the key to getting that invisible selfie stick effect is to make sure your camera is parallel to the pole and also that you're using the right diameter pole that's gonna disappear from the shots. Because there's two lenses are recording from each side of the camera and there's a small overlap, it's gonna crop out what's in between those lenses, which is your camera and also the invisible selfie stick. There are so many fun and creative ways to mount the X3 to capture amazing shots. Hopefully those tips will get you started so you can get out there and start capturing some really cool shots. I have all of these mounts in my book and a lot of mounting techniques, so if you wanna check that out, the link is in the video description below. Now that you know how to navigate your camera and you've got it mounted, go out there and capture some 360 videos and photos. When you come back, I'm gonna show you how to transfer the footage over and do some basic edits. Now that you've got some footage on your Insta360 X3, I'm gonna show you how to transfer them over to a phone, tablet, or a computer and do some basic edits. The first way to edit your footage is using the Insta360 app on your phone or your tablet. And this is one of the best options if you want a quick, easy way to edit your footage. You can also take advantage of some of the features that the Insta360 app has, such as their pre-designed templates and Shot Lab, which I'll show you. If you want the highest quality output, you can edit your videos and photos over on a computer using Insta360 Studio. And this doesn't have all of the flair of the Insta360 app, which I'm gonna show you, but it has options for really higher output videos so that you won't lose much quality. I'm gonna just show you how to use the Insta360 app, just so you can get a quick, easy way to edit those photos and videos. Make sure your camera is powered on, and then just open up the Insta360 app. You can tap the icon on the bottom where it says album, and if your camera is not connected, you can tap this little icon here, which has got a camera and a Wi-Fi signal and that's gonna reconnect your camera to the phone through the app. And once your camera is connected, you can see a thumbnail of all the files that are on your camera's micro SD card. So you can look through them and pick out, I'm gonna pick out a 360 video file because that's the best way to show you guys how to edit. Once you tap on that thumbnail, it's gonna open up the video file and bring it into the editor for the Insta360 app. And there's just so many creative things because you're recording this full sphere of video or photo, there's really a lot of creative editing techniques you can create using this. Up at the top here, you have a few different editing options. So you have auto, which is just gonna auto go through your video and the app is gonna actually pick out sections that it thinks would be a video you'd like to use. And it's gonna pre-edit those for you and give you a few little clips to choose from. If you use Snap, that actually allows you to watch your video. And as you're watching it, you can record the way you move your, your phone around, which actually creates a movement on your video. So if you start recording, and then you move your phone, it's gonna record that movement. Then if you use the editing tab, that just gives you all of the editing tools you can see down here below, as well as using keyframes, which I'll show you in just a second. So if you just tap on the video, it will play. At the bottom here, you have the trim tool, which you can use to just make shorter clips out of longer ones. You've got the aspect ratio. So I've just got a nine to 16, which is a vertical frame. But you can choose a different aspect ratio if you want different size videos. Clarity plus and color plus, allow you to add more clarity or color to your videos. And then you've got a music icon which you can use to add some music tracks to your video. Speed is gonna allow you to change the speed of the playback of your video. So if you record it at a high frame rate such as 60 frames per second, you can slow your footage down two times and it's gonna still play back in smooth slow motion. If you tap on multi-view, it'll basically allow you to see a view through the front 
and through the back of the lens. So you can have two different perspectives and one will be a little box in the corner. Snapshot is how you can get still photos out of your video. And the filter tab has a lot of filters you can use for color grading. These are basically presets that you can use. You can just sort through and pick one that you like the colors of and that's gonna give you an overall look for your video. Adjust just gives you all of the manual adjustments such as color temperature, contrast, exposure, saturation, all the normal color adjustments that you would make if you wanna just manually adjust your videos or photos. The mark tool just allows you to mark a highlight in your video so the app will see that that's a moment that you like. You can reset your edits and you can delete the file. You can also click download to download the file and save it to the app so you have that file on there when your camera is not connected. Also the preview that you see here is a low res preview so it won't look as good of quality as the final output that you create. And one of the most important aspects of using this app to edit your videos is to use keyframes. Keyframes mark a certain point on your video how you have the com composition. So if you zoom in, for example, you can mark it to have that view. And then you add a keyframe by pressing the plus symbol here, or you can update a keyframe if you already have a keyframe set. Then you can move further in your video, you can adjust the composition, add another keyframe, and then your video is going to transition from how you have it set in one keyframe to the next. And that's really how you reframe your videos when you're working with these 360 videos, because there's so much you can choose to look at which is one of the greatest aspects of using the Insta360 X3. Once you're done making your edits, you can export a single clip and that's gonna save it to your media library. You can also go where it says stories and you've got a couple options here. You've got Shot Lab and there's about 30 different preset shots that Insta360 has included here. So if you just choose one of them, it's gonna give you some tips on how to shoot it. Once you select use that theme, then you can go select your own footage that you filmed and add it in and it's gonna create those effects on your footage. You can also use Flash Cut, which is some pre-edited themes you can just plug your videos into and it's going to create a little video edit for you. At the top of the stories here, you can also just tap on Create a Story. That's going to go ahead and allow you to create a story from scratch. You can edit it all with multiple clips. So there's a lot of editing tools here in this app and that's one of the great reasons to use the app to edit your videos. But if you want the highest quality, bring it over to a computer and use Insta360 Studio. And you can just transfer it over by just connecting your camera with the USB cable to transfer that footage over to your computer. Of course, there are so many more things you can do with your Insta360 X3, and that's why I've created a book for it, because that has everything in there that you need to know, and it will really take your editing to the next level. You can check out the link in the video description below to go get yourself a copy. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have fun. Until next time, see you soon.